G'day guys, it's Calvin from the Cartoon Company in New Zealand. So I'm going to reflash another 3UZ ECU. And even now, we're still seeing guys that say you can't reflash Toyota ECUs. And this of course comes from the earlier ones, that there was there's no really good modes of reflashing or retuning them. There are, but they're just not practical to do. I do happen to have a Mines ECU for sale, which was coming up. I've got to do a video on that. And they used to fit a whole new daughter board on it. But from about 2000, in the 3UZ range, when we went to the 3UZs, the ECUs became reprogrammable. Same as like your later Hiluxes, like that one, yes. They ran a reprogrammable ECU. So let's have a look at this. Let's open this little box. Oh, it's not a box, it's a bag. Let's unwrap this computer and we'll see what we've got and we'll show you through the process. So it's covered in stickers. It's addressed to me. It's got a little thing on the back here saying that it's been inspected. There's no restricted items because uh, there's a PCB. There's the examiner. It's kind of a neat little piece of paper. I might just keep that actually. We open that and it's from Omar. So this one is all the way from Pakistan. It's been stitched together. This is a, a bit like the wool sacks. I remember as a young fella, wool sacks used to be stitched together. Used to put them in the press and sew them all up. Maybe a note in it for me. Delete auto transmission. Easy. Delete catalytic converters, so free flow of air for horsepower gains can be made. General inspection and any cleaning, etc. of circuit build. Omar from Pakistan. I don't think Mr. Inspector did the screws up very well. Now the problem I have with this one is someone has been here before me. And I know someone's been here before me. Because this one has actually been running. 50-89661-50800 is the ECU number. And one of the tricks that get done is they're sometimes modified so you can't read off the codes from them and, and get some of the information out of them. So far it looks okay. Righto. I'm going to get my test equipment out. Plug it in and see if we can get some information out of this ECU. Okie dokie dokie. Here is Omar's ECU. To check out what these are out of, what we do is we use Doyo DIY. And that'll tell us what that ECU is out of. Hello! Uh, so, I was saying, Toyo DIY. Uh, so I'm going to, I've gone to, I've gone to the uh, vehicle identification. Well, we, we don't know what the vehicle, well I do actually, because I've already checked this, okay, but you guys don't know what the CC was out of. So we use the parts reference, parts cross reference. Uh, we're going to go, now all ECUs, when you said ECUs, 9661. 
a through no two uz if it's a two uz ecu it might be eight nine six 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 but otherwise pretty much in the uz range in the one uz and three uz it's eight nine six six one it's not a special thing that i know the ecu numbers okay we put a dash in it doesn't matter if you don't do a dash and the next number is the chassis identification 50 is a celsius or ls 430 comes from the ls 400s as well so ls 400 and then ls 430 celsius and then we had that part number didn't we 800 and we're going to tick these boxes because we don't know what market it's from and we go search do we go japan 2000 to 2006 celsius ucf 30 it's blue so we can tick on it click on it <coughs> And it then tells us 2003 to 2006 UCF30. Those are the submodels, class A, B, and C, with a 3UZ Japanese with a six-speed automatic in it. Again, if we click on here, there we go. And you'll notice I've got pictures. We'll get rid of this ad, eh? We don't want ads. No, thank you. See that ad? Oh, there's another ad. Piss off, Ed. <coughs> and that one. Piss off. Oh, I'm in a loop. I'd really prefer not to have ads on my videos, actually, but you get screwed by Google if you don't have them. Right, there we have ECUs. And we'll actually see here, which is interesting, you'll see the ECU numbers actually different to what we searched. So it kind of tells you there's some crossover in these ECUs as well. Brackets. Here we go, circuit opening relay, relay for the fuel pump. I wonder if the other ones actually cross over to that same number. Here we go, 17 instead of the 800. And by doing this and checking your parts, you get to know which ones can swap and don't swap. And you can see... Um, different throttle bodies and all those different things you can match over that go with that stuff and i've spent hours doing that right back to the video now i turn it on and um i should get a check engine light it's not giving me a check engine light that is very bad Someone's been in this ECU and no check engine light is a, as I said, is a bad thing. I'm going to cheat a little bit. Hmm. See, I've got a check engine light now. I just gave that relay a bit of a wake up. Let's see if I can get in again. We've got power and the ECU is outputting a check light, so we're moving forward, but it didn't do it initially. And it is not communicating with that ECU. That is not ideal. Plan B, because I'm going to go get my scan tool. Right, right there. Cables everywhere. Okay, let's see if I can get in with this one. We're going in as an LS 430. That is not good. It's not communicating. The ECU is powered up though. I'm going to turn it off and see if it brings that check light on again. That seems to be working now. Oh, that was interesting. Huh? Can we see that? 
So when I turn it off, the power is staying on. So the ECU is staying on. That's awesome. Check light now turns on and off. But that main relay circuit is not functioning anywhere like it should. Oh dear. Looks like there's going to be a bit more of a challenge on this one, but I'm going to get it sorted. I'm going to do some checking. I'll give you an update once I know a bit more about what's going on here. I've been doing some testing with this ECU. And then I realized that I hadn't actually done an update of where we're at and what's happening with it. And I've, I've become quite intimate with it, driving through this process, and because I haven't come up with this exact fault before, I had to work out a diagnosis process. Um, and so that gives us an, it gives me another challenge. It's no, no biggie, it's no hard, nothing hard. It's just a little bit of brain power to think what's the best way to test it. So watch, let's see what we found. So what I did when I was working on it, is I went and got another ECU. This one happens to be a GS430, I believe. Quite certain, if I put that into Toyo DIY, I'm quite certain that's a GS430. We will notice too that the actual case, the ECU case is different as well. Um, we've got different way the screws out here, different brackets. And different in the makeup of the ECU here. I spent some time searching and I've brought a replacement ECU. Well, I brought two of them, but I only know that one is definitely on the way. The other one, not sure that's going to make it. The payment details were a little bit sketchy. But that's, that's neither here nor there on this particular problem. So I took this ECU, and I don't think that's not on. So I took another ECU. That is working. And I plugged it in. Put it in the right hole, eh? Domain relay back in, bam, turn it on, and straight away we get an engine check light. Out comes the scan tool, <laughs> and I go in as a, a GS430 with can, and it pretty much goes straight in and gives me current data, tells me there's a camshaft position sensor fault, airflow meter fault, Possibly because they're not connected. And I can get into the current data. It's saying here that I've got 13 codes, but I'm actually in the DTCs, it's, I'm only able to see 11. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that proves to me that this setup works. I can turn it on and off. Off, on, off, on. So that's working. So we go back to the faulty one. With the faulty one, we turn it on, we massage it into life, and I've made some couple of little changes and adjustments. I should have said that in this one, I can go in it as an LS430 and a GS430. So with a couple of adjustments, I've managed to get some communications with this ECU. And this one only has 12 codes. That's really interesting. Still only can read 11. 
Now I'm going to hook up the laptop and I'm going to suck some information out of that one to see what I can find, what's been done in there. One of the great things about when you come across a problem like this is the expansion of knowledge if you treat it as a learning experience. I've got quite a lot of information with regards to the diagnostic systems on this and the resistances and so I've measured and checked and double checked and gone through it. Oh, that's what I wanted to do. I want to measure the resistance of the ECU. Just measuring the resistance of the CAN channel, the CAN bus inside the ECU. Zero, open circuit. And turning it on, and of course we need the relay in it. And we need to turn it on. So I've compared the codes in this one to the codes in this one. And my scan tool is getting a little bit old, but I've got some other ways of checking codes. And the difference with this one here is it has an immobilizer code, funnily enough, because this one hasn't had the immobilizer removed yet. That one has. But there's also other damage in that one, which is causing me issues. I'm going to wait until the other ECU arrives, or one of the other replacements arrive. In the meantime, this one's going down to be repaired. I had a discussion with the repairman. I'm going to send him my test loom and some knowledge and some bits and pieces. He's going to check it. And he, hopefully, hopefully we can fix it. That gives us more options. If the other ones don't turn up, or if this one can be repaired easily, then we're going to do that. Try and get this vehicle back on the road and get it back on the racetrack. Yes, it's dark. That's why it's flicky. But look, I got an ups bag. Got this, this ups bag arrived. Woohoohoo! Ups bag. Yep. And look in the ups bag was this. Oh, and in there's some, some bubble wrap. Let's hope that this is the right one. We don't need the ups bag anymore. Get rid of the ups bag. Please let this be the right one. Please let it be good. So this one came out of Japan. Look at that. It actually comes with the smart key. So whoever pulled this out actually knew something, which was, that's really nice. We're not using that. It is the bang on right one. Check that out. And it is super clean. Beauty. Oh, spotless in there too. Absolutely spotless. All right, let's get in. Let's get it flashed. So this only just turned up today, and I rushed right down, and we're going to see if we can find some info on it. Straight in. And this one has the DTC for the um, immobilizer. So we've got 13 codes in there. We've got 13 codes. That is awesome let's just let's just double check that this one actually does yes and turn on and off woohoo yeah it does all right oh that's a relief that is a big relief it's just awesome that is a sweetheart of looking ECU. It's nice and clean and tidy. So here we are. We're going to reflash um, this ECU. It is a little bit late. 
So I, I whip in here and I grab a tune and um, click on the tune. Confirm that that is what I'm doing first. To tune in. Push right. And it'll tell me a few bits and pieces. And I'll click some buttons. And in a moment, we will get things underway. There, we're starting to work it in there. The dongle starts to flash. And in a moment, we'll turn the switch on. And that ECU is going to be written. This one is going to be a manual. So we're going to delete the transmission part of the, of the ECU. We've put in the most ramped up throttle response. We've given it um, no auction sensors. We've turned those off. We've given it the best performance that we can out of this stock ECU. And once I've got that in there, we will then uh, brick the trans side of it. We're just going to turn that off. It's a pretty basic process. But it's telling me that that one was successful. It's quite nice doing this late at night. I'm not interrupted. We don't really want to make a mistake and brick the whole ECU. What have we got here? We got this ECU. This one's programmed as a manual. Yeah, I know there's a box on the back of it. We turn it on. The button lights on. Hit the start button. Perfect! Woohoo! 